Hi there, my name's Ed, and today we are going to be tasting some matcha. Now, I am a bit of a matcha noob. I'm actually more than that, I'm a total uh, matcha noob. Um, I've had matcha only a couple of times, maybe, um, and I wasn't blown away particularly. Um, I think one issue I had was, not an issue, but one thing that I felt was from a beverage, I want something that's nice and warming, that has a bit more volume. I mean, matcha, you make a very small amount, so um, it's gone pretty quickly, it cools down pretty quickly, so, um, you know, if you kind of take the kind of British tradition of a, of, of a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or whatever, you know, you kind of have that big volume. And that warms you up, that kind of almost nourishes you in a way. So um, that was my struggle with matcha um, originally. But matcha is quite interesting because um, it's not a tea um, in the sense that you put leaves into water and brew them. It is literally tea. Like matcha is ground up tea leaves um, very, very, very finely, um, depending on the kind of quality and this is actually some stone ground matcha, so it's incredibly, um, incredibly fine um, ground. And I actually don't have any tools really with me today. I have, don't have a bowl, um, I don't have the, the whisk or the scoop. I've measured a, a teaspoon here, which is, um, came up to almost exactly two grams, which is quite interesting. Um, and I have got a bowl, I've got a fork, um, this is going to make a lot of you cringe, I imagine. And we've got some water. So I preheated this um, a little bit earlier. It's not too pre not too preheated now. Um, so I'm starting with the water. I'm not sure if that's even correct. Um, probably not, actually. Uh, oh well. So I've eyeballed about 30 grams in there. And we're going to go with the matcha. Um, some sources said to sift the matcha. I have not done that because um, I didn't want to get it everywhere. Um, I'm going to do my best to whisk this up. The match is interesting because it's coming into kind of fashion in a sense, um, or it is in fashion. Um, the matcha lattes, um, the matcha flavoured kind of ice cream. Um, I mean, matcha to chocolate cake or whatever, you know, baked goods and that sort of thing. Um, as you can hear, there is no foaming going on. I know there's meant to be foaming. Um, maybe a little bit. This is a bit of ASMR for you. Um, but I'm mainly just looking for this to be mixed. Um, it's got quite an interesting, um, I'll just show you. I mean, obviously it's got the brilliantly green colour, um, and kind of interestingly, it's kind of it doesn't it can't it won't dissolve um, because they are particles of tea leaf, um, so it's not like sugar or salt that will kind of actually dissolve into the water. So it is going to be in suspension, um, so those particles are just floating around in there milling about and because they're so fine they probably remain in suspension pretty well um if you imagine kind of like dust in the air or like flour or something even this matcha actually when i was getting it out of the packet it was kind of floating about in the air in front of me um and that's probably the same thing that would happen in the cup so um i don't want to let this cool down too much um, i have not achieved any foam whatsoever i don't have a milk frother i don't have anything um let's see how it tastes Okay, so instantly, bitter, but not too bitter actually, having said that. There's an, the initial kind of almost um, suggestion of bitterness. It's funny because it, you're expecting more bitterness. It kind of enters the mouth and it's kind of, it bursts in as, as, a, as a green tea. Um, you expect a little bit of bitterness from those last infusions, 
Um, and I think that's what you get from matcha, but it's interesting. It's not actually very bitter. It, it, it diminishes very quickly. I know matcha is a very um, ceremony-based drink in Japan. Um, in fact, I was looking at myself in the camera and holding the cup like this almost seems wrong because I've seen matcha drunk primarily with two hands. Um, and obviously with, with, the, with a large bowl um, and all sorts of things, but we won't go into that. I don't know uh, almost anything about that, so there's no point in me even uh, talking about it. So I can see these little particulates moving around in the water. So we've got that bitterness. We've got that um, umami. It's, it's, it's that green umami that you get from green teas. Um, and reminiscent of seaweed. Um, it's not too grassy. It's not too... It's, um, hmm. it's kind of stumped me a little bit. It's, I think it's diff it's, there's different strands of the umami. It's not just one note of umami. Um, it's almost, the taste is kind of almost like, a, I want to say um, soy sauce, but it's not. Um, but almost like the aroma of a soy sauce, not the taste of a soy sauce. Um, but maybe that kind of, because soy sauce is, um, I believe it's a fermented product. So maybe kind of like fermented soy or something along those lines. Um, I might just give us another whisk. The interesting thing as well about matcha is obviously um, what it contains obviously it contains a lot of caffeine as it because it's literally pure tea um, so you've got a lot of caffeine in there obviously balanced with the theanine so for a lot of people I think this is a kind of almost alternative to that coffee kick um, for the morning and because it's you know it is a small volume it can probably be pretty quick to, to, to put together um, it's definitely a kind of a replacement for that um, initial hit um, in the morning. Okay, so that last sip has not been very enjoyable because there are um, there is a lot of the matcha at the bottom. I kind of almost think whether well, matcha is. Um, is even kind of accepted by the Western palate. If you're Japanese, you probably like matcha. Uh, you've probably had matcha. You probably like matcha. It's kind of a part of your um, not repertoire, but your kind of um, let's say repertoire repertoire of in, uh, of, of flavors that you you know you've tried uh, that you enjoy. Um, for Westerners, umami. Um, is it, it, it's, it's kind of relatively unknown in a way. If you if you got a random person off the street and said, what is umami? Um, I can't imagine that many people would actually be able to tell you um, what it even is, let alone kind of what might be umami. Um, you know, at school you kind of learn, you know, sweet, salty, sour, bitter. They tend to leave out umami, uh, which is pretty interesting. And obviously, it's coming into into the marketplace as matcha lattes and matcha ice cream and matcha frozen yogurt and um, matcha chocolate. And I'm kind of interested to see if there's anything um, you viewers have um, enjoyed um, with the addition of matcha. I've had some matcha kind of chocolatey stuff, and I personally didn't really enjoy it. Um, I found that the the matcha obviously cut the kind of sweetness and the richness of the chocolate. Um, but I think, yes, I'm gonna add more water because it's so um, concentrated at the bottom. Um, but I'm not sure, maybe it's because I didn't kind of almost expect um, the matcha flavor or how it kind of would actually present itself in that, in that chocolate. But I personally did not enjoy it. 
Um, so I'd be interested to see, again, as a sort of tea community, what we think of what we think of matcha, whether we're drinking it, whether we're um, drinking it in its pure form, whether we're having it in um, other forms. Obviously, you've got the enthusiasts, um, but how you know how are people approaching matcha? Um, be interested to hear, be interested to hear I'm just going to take a couple more sips of this to see how it is one thing to note again um, if you watched my last video you would have seen that I was drinking some old tea this is actually some old matcha and I've got a slight feeling that the mutedness of this matcha is because it's old because it's in that fine, fine powder, it oxidises a lot. I mean, it's still got that brilliant green colour, probably not as brilliant as it was um, originally. Um, but if you think about the surface area of a tea leaf, you've got the surface and then you've got the kind of inner, obviously, like the structure of the tea. Um, so the outside might oxidise a bit, you know, from being left for a year. Um, but with match service, you know, there's, no, there's nowhere to hide. Um, so all of it has the potential to oxidise, and with oxidation, um, you tend to lose um, you tend to lose and gain flavours, and depending on what you know what what we're talking about, um, you can gain good flavours or you can um, you can lose good flavours. Um, I think in the case of matcha, you're losing most of the good, and you don't really gain um, much. Um, Hmm. Yeah, I've just got another hit of um, matcha kind of sediment. Um, I'm a big matcha noob. Please enlighten me um, as as to how I might be able to enjoy um, this matcha or any matcha. Um, if someone offered to me, um, offered matcha to me, I definitely would drink it. I think I have the potential to enjoy it, um, if that makes sense. Um, but the way that I've prepared it for myself, mm, not so much. Um, so, there we are. That is the video today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.